she gave everybody acting advice. But she um, didn't ever help me learn lines. No, God, no. No, that was my job. You had to do that. And she knew I could do that. I mean, I was, I was good at that. That wasn't the hard part. When you're on the set, yeah. I mean, you know, if you're not speaking up, if you're not on your mark, if you're, God forbid, if you're late or... I was, I was pretty, pretty good about all that stuff. I was terrified to be bad, you know. I didn't want to stand out, be her daughter, and come in and not be good. God. Um, so I, I worked pretty hard. How was she on the set, and did, did she treat you differently than other actors? No, I don't think she tried, no. Oddly enough, <laughs> she did not, and she treated us all, you know, kind of like, do it right. But she was always really right about what she's saying. It was, it was a great, she was a great teacher. She really was, and she did not suffer fools easily. And we had four freaking days to do the show, from beginning to the end. Monday morning, we got that script, not too early, Go to lunch, come back, block, go home. Next day, no script. Get up on your feet, remember the blocking, do a run through. If you need the script, fine for the run through, but by Wednesday, no script. Cameras, costumes, thing. Dress rehearsal Wednesday night. Thursday, audience is in. One more rehearsal with the cameras, do the show. And that's whether you had full fledged dance numbers. 57 people on the set or just three, it didn't matter. That was the schedule and it was rough. So you, you had to have a well-oiled machine and nobody could waste time. And we didn't. It worked like a gym. It's, I wish that that's the way they filmed shows today. It's the, so not that way. The years you worked with your mother on the show, um, did, you, did you walk away with, with one, one really important lesson that you learned from her? Or was it just a, a myriad of things? Well, it was a myriad of things. Um, and I don't think it was just one thing. It's kind of osmosis at this point. You know, I don't, I don't know. I suppose if I write about this someday, I'll try. I'll try. Hate to waste your tape while I think here. Um, but I think it has something to do with take care of Lucy, meaning me. She used to say that a lot. Be kind to Lucy. Take care of Lucy. It sounded kind of trite and strange to me when I was younger. Like, yeah. But as you get older, you realize what that means. It means you have to be, you have to really be aware of your time, your health, your rest, the people you surround yourself with, your stress level. And it was great advice for me to carry forever. Like my father used to say, if you don't know what to do, don't do anything. Those kinds of things stick, stick with me. I hear them in my head a lot. Take care of Lucy. And it reminds me of like, you know, when they say on an airplane, you put your oxygen mask on first or you can't take care of your child. And I thought that was um, so not show business advice, but so totally good for show business, especially, especially show business. Yeah. What about, uh, what did you learn about comedy? Pretty much everything. <laughs> Whatever I know, I'm pretty sure it came from her. Uh, but also my father and also Gil Gordon and Vivian and all those people who totally believed what they were doing. That's what the best thing was about those shows, was no matter what situations they were given, all brilliantly crafted situations, mind you. She was very quick to make sure that the writers created a situation. If they're gonna put me in something outrageous, you better get me there in a totally believable way. But then once they got you there, you had to believe it. You couldn't do it like it was funny. Like, here comes the joke. You know, we were lucky. I was thinking about this the other day. Because of the fact that we only did it once, for an, they only had a live audience once. So you only got to hear where they're gonna laugh once. And a lot of people get used to having the audience in, they have a dress rehearsal audience, then they have a taping audience, and they have another audience. Or you're in the theater and you've done your show for several months and you've heard where the laughs are. You start reading the stuff like you know it's funny and then you lose the whole damn thing. And one of the things that I learned was really how to just play the situation speak up, enunciate so you don't lose the joke. Don't talk on the end of somebody else's line. They can't hear the setup. You know, that's comedy. That's what you learn from great comedians. And it, it has never changed in all this time.